for tougher laws to tackle youth crime. Tonight in Seven News Flashback, the bridge that changed life in southeast Queensland. 85 years ago today, the Hornybrook Highway connected Brisbane and Redcliffe. A day trip would never be the same again. Rod Young reports. Before the bridge, the only way to Redcliffe was by boat or a road trip taking forever. But during the Depression, Manuel Hornibrook had a vision for an easier trip to the beach. In 1932, construction started on the world's longest viaduct bridge. It required a mountain of timber. 250 men were employed in the Mount Me and Conondale Ranges. Two mills built the girders and decking. A plant at Dara produced concrete for the arches. It was Australia's first major public-private venture and one of Queensland's first toll roads. The 2.8 kilometre Hornibrook Highway opened in 1935. Really accelerated the urban uh, development of Redcliffe and uh, made magical changes to it. The peninsula was now a short drive away and the perfect place to camp. Redcliffe boomed. The first golf club opened. The toll remained until 1975 when the push started for a new crossing. The new structure was made from concrete. The Houghton Highway opened in 1979. Mr Bjorki Peterson took the opportunity to push for more road funds for Queensland. He even took a swipe at the contractors, Barclay Brothers, for finishing way ahead of schedule. He jokingly said the government must have paid them too much. Kids on bikes beat the official motorcade, but gridlock quickly set in. The plan was to refurbish the Hornybrook Highway, but it never reopened. I suppose you as a fisherman would be happy if they never reopened the old bridge. That's right. You keep on fishing. Keep on fishing. Yes, keep on. Nothing else to do. A decade ago, the third bridge opened, named after World War I veteran Ted Smout. While the crossing may have changed over time, the fun of a trip to Redcliffe has stayed the same. And Redcliffe has held on to the stories of how a bridge led to its boom. You can see actually that the uniforms that the toll ticket master used to have to wear during those times, and whether it was wet weather or, or uh, dry weather, he would be out there taking the tickets. And we've actually got some of the tickets from the time as well. The original blueprints, which are blue. <laughs> weather now.